Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about the solvent properties of water, specifically IB understanding A115, which states solvent properties of water linked to its role as a medium for metabolism and for transport in plants and animals. And we're going to emphasize that a wide variety of hydrophilic molecules dissolved in water and that most enzymes catalyze reactions in aqueous solutions. Students should also understand that the function of some molecules in cells depend on them being hydrophobic and insoluble. So this video is all about what it means to be a solvent, how solvents work, specifically water, and how hydrophilic and hydrophobic molecules interact within an aqueous solution. So the first thing we need to do is talk about what a solvent is. A solvent is a substance that dissolves other things. Water is a polar substance, or a polar solvent, polar meaning hydrophilic, so when we use the terms hydrophilic, polar, those should be the terms that are associated with water. And if you remember, water has a partially positive end and a partially negative end. If we look at the water molecule, the oxygen, again water is H2O, the oxygen end is slightly negative and the hydrogen end is slightly positive. This slight positive and slight negative sides means that there's a slightly positive pole and a slightly negative pole. Because there is a slightly positive and negative pole, this substance, this molecule, is said to be polar because of those poles and therefore interacts with other hydrophilic or polar molecules. The way that it does that is that there are substances, like in this case salt, salt is a solid, it's a crystalline structure, and when you dump salt into a solvent like water, these substances, the chlorine and the sodium respectively, are going to disassociate or break the bonds between themselves, and they're going to be bonded weakly to these water molecules. And if we zoom in on those interactions, you will see that because the chlorine ion, which makes up part of this salt in a Cl compound, is negatively charged. And so this negatively charged ion, or this anion, is going to interact with the slightly positive sides because opposites attract. And so the positive end of these water molecules are going to orient themselves towards the negative ion of this compound, meaning the chlorine will interact with the hydrogens of the water. Chlorine isn't the only ion that is going to dissociate when we dissolve this solute in our solvent. The sodium is positively charged. It's a positive ion. We call that a cation. And so that ion, being positively charged, is going to interact with the negative end of the other water molecules. So in this solution, which is solvent and solute, the solvent is going to interact, in this case water, is going to interact with the two ions differently. Again, chlorine interacting with the hydrogen ends and the sodium interacting with the oxygen ends. And as it does that, it holds these ions from bonding with each other and therefore keeping it from forming that solid crystalline structure that it was in the first place. The negative end of the water molecules are attracted to the positive ions. It's all about the attraction between opposite charges. Opposites attract, in this case, water being polar, having both positive and negative ends means that it is a really good solvent for dissolving substances and holding them in solution. Hydrophilic molecules in aqueous solutions, a couple examples that you have to know about. The cytoplasm of a cell contains a wide variety of water-soluble substances, and some of those substances would be things like glucose, ions, amino acids, proteins, which make up enzymes. All of those are going to be dissolved within the cytoplasm of the cell. Cytoplasm meaning the fluid that is contained within the cell membrane. Water is an excellent medium for transporting dissolved substances. And so when we look at the xylem and phloem, which are the transport tissue of a plant, things that are going to be transported by these tissues would be sodium ions, potassium ions, and calcium ions. We will talk more about that when we get into videos pertaining to plant biology. But when we also look at the ability for organisms like ourselves to transport nutrients and uh, ions through our body. Blood is obviously our transport medium, and blood is an aqueous solution that many hydrophilic molecules are dissolved and transported in. Some of those things that are transported via blood would be things like red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, glucose, and ions. And so both plants and animals have the ability to transport and have the necessity 
of transporting nutrients and ions throughout the organism. Hydrophobic molecules in aqueous solutions are, as the understanding stated, just as important as the hydrophilic molecules in aqueous solutions. So we have steroid hormones that can pass through the plasma membrane and nuclear membrane of a cell. These are things that are produced naturally by our bodies. They are insoluble in solution, but are still transported through our body and produce a lot of effects that those particular hormones are required for. Many proteins have sections that are hydrophobic, which allows them to stay embedded in the membrane. We've had other videos about the plasma membrane specifically, but as a review, as we talk about these hydrophobic molecules in aqueous solutions, many of these proteins that are embedded within this membrane have both hydrophilic and hydrophobic sections of them. If we look specifically at this glycoprotein, there would be sections of this protein right in through here, which are hydrophobic because they are interacting with the zone of hydrophobicity or the phospholipid tails, and therefore would need to be hydrophobic. But there are portions of the protein which are exposed outside of this membrane and interacting with the hydrophilic heads of those phospholipids and are interacting with not only the carbohydrate chains, but the water that is contained within both the inside and outside of the cell because, again, cells are utilizing aqueous solutions. The environment is an aqueous solution and the cytoplasm is an aqueous solution as well. The epithelial cells of leaves can secrete wax that is used to coat the leaves and is called the cuticle. Cuticle is this thick waxy coating, kind of like sunscreen, on the outside of their skin layer. Again, plant cells have an epidermis. It's a single cell thick layer that provides them kind of the boundary between the inside and outside of the organism, much like our skin. And this cuticle helps to prevent water loss and uh, high UV exposure, much like sunscreen for us. But it is waxy and therefore insoluble in an aqueous solution. That's it for this particular video. We talked about specific examples of both hydrophilic and hydrophobic substances within aqueous environments. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave your questions in the comments. We'll see you later.